Digital transformation for FinServe organizations with Smarsh and AWS. And joining us from Smarsh, we have Vice President of Solutions Engineering, Patrick Palomo, and Director of Delivery Engineering, Blake Sherwood. Welcome them to the stage, please. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for that introduction. Appreciate everyone coming and spending some time with us this afternoon, taking time out of your busy schedule. So, a little bit about Smarsh and how AWS supports us and our customers. But digital communications. As we mentioned before, I'm Patrick Palomo. I'm the VP of Solutions Engineering and Architecture at Smarsh. I've been with the firm for three years. Prior to that, I come from industry. I worked at JP Morgan and NatWest Markets where I ran risk, legal, and compliance technology for over 10 years, solving problems very similar to the ones we're going to talk about later. Let me introduce Blake to you. Blake, would you mind introducing yourself to the crowd? Yep, sure. Um, my name's, I was, as you are aware, Blake Sherwood. Um, I've been with the company for about two years, and uh, my uh, background has usually been around security and compliance and whatnot for the better part of a decade. Um, but uh, my involvement uh, with Smarsh is to direct and handle platform architecture and delivery for all our customers. Thank you, Blake. We flew him all the way out from London just to speak with you all, so I certainly appreciate you making the journey. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't heard of Smarsh, uh, we've actually been around for over 20 years. We were founded by Stephen Marsh, hence the name, Smarsh. Um, in one sentence, we help our customers manage digital communications for the purpose of regulatory compliance and mitigating risk. So we primarily serve customers in regulated financial services. Uh, well over 90% of our revenue comes from FinServe. Um, the other balance comes from federal, state, and local government where we have use cases that overlap. Um, presently, we're over a thousand people in eight different countries and headquartered uh, in the U.S. out of Portland, Oregon. Um, we have been recognized by Gartner seven times for being a leader in the industry. Uh, the way that we've worked to shape this marketplace is with partners. Partners like AWS, uh, technology partners like Zoom, Slack, or Box, and more importantly with our customers. Here's to set the scene for the problems that we solve. This is um, stats by Statistica, estimating the global data sphere reaching over 175 zettabytes by 2025. One could argue with the recent advancements in generative AI, that could perhaps be underestimated. Just given the size and scale of that problem, really the only way for us to manage that properly is via public cloud infrastructure. On top of that, our customers face an uh, ever-evolving regulatory landscape. These are just a snippet of the fines that we've seen over the past couple years. What we tend to see in the market is that customers are struggling with old regulations being applied to new modalities of communication, combined with brand new regulations coming uh, out of Brussels around privacy, data protection, and data residency. Um, so putting all that together, what most of our customers need, but very few have embarked upon, is a comprehensive strategy around managing their digital communications. You can see that, well, I don't know how many of you communicated today with your colleagues at work across how many different modalities. You probably hopped on your phone, responded to an email, maybe a Slack chat, hopped on a Zoom call. That is the way that the modern workforce works and there'd be no indication that that's gonna change anytime soon. I mentioned earlier the size and the scale of that, the breadth. And that just leads to so many more areas to mitigate risk. You see from my earlier slide, the reputational damage, fines that can come from missteps in this space. Having a comprehensive study clearly makes sense. Sounds easy. Here's kind of what gets in the way of that. This is actually a sanitized version of an actual customer's architecture. Um, and it's pretty typical to what we see at many of our customers. This wasn't necessarily anyone's fault per se. What you see here on the left-hand side is all the different of modalities of communication today from voice, collaboration tools, mobile, including SMS from the carriers, WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram. I would describe that as just good old-fashioned scope creep. So folks had to make decisions, purchase point solutions at different points of time, um, mergers, acquisitions, uh, different divisions, geographies, needing different system of records. Maybe a compliance team for a uh, capital markets division needed to purchase a surveillance solution. So what you have here is quite common. 
So the, the challenge with this is, is that what you see is duplicate data all over the place across multiple systems that weren't necessarily designed in the first place to talk to one another. So it's complex, expensive, you have issues with data completeness, accuracy and timeliness. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Um, the budgets that our customers tend to, to deal with today have been outpaced by the pace of regulatory change and the explosion in communications data that we talked about earlier. Here's our solution to the problem. This is the Smart Enterprise Platform. So we do specialize, we have a very long history in the capture of digital communications, as I mentioned before, from voice to mobile to social. That's all brought into a, a comprehensive uh, communications data warehouse that we call, and on top of that sit our applications. So the first is uh, what many recognize as an archive. It's a regulatory record keeping requirement for us to index and store that data to make it available for uh, audit um, or its cousin e-discovery. So for those who have colleagues in uh, the legal space, sporting litigation or legal ops, they're very familiar with their needs around early case assessment uh, and trolling through data, exporting it to external counsel, other e-discovery providers. In the middle there, you have supervision and surveillance, so in regulated financial services, the compliance teams that we support need to manage programs, uh, monitoring communications, detect potential fraud, market risk, insider trading, malicious intent, or in some cases, just negligence. Um, we kind of wrap that around um, uh, a framework of APIs for extensibility, and it's all, of course, supported uh, on a public cloud framework with AWS. Just to touch on what's so important about our relationship and history with AWS, these are kind of the four tenants that we tend to talk about. Um, Blake is actually pretty well positioned to touch on these four tenants, so I'll, I'll hand it over to Blake and you can talk a little bit about availability, security, resiliency, and all the, the wonderful things that are important to our customers. Yep, thanks Patrick. Um, so part of my role inside Smash is to, well, as you can see, the ecosystem is changing quite extensively. Uh, the market is moving faster than technology can. Uh, we have to adapt very, very quickly. And we focus on these four main areas because at the end of the day, we all like to go to sleep at night and not worry about our ecosystem. Now, availability for us is really important because as we have been responding to that substantial data growth, we go north of somewhere near of 10,000 EC2s for our entire fleet across five data center regions. So it's important for us to kind of take advantage of what Amazon um, proposes and what they advocate in regards to their feature set for EC2 auto scaling, because simply put, managing that fleet and making sure high availability is, um, uh, you know, five nines, hundred percent all the time, it, it can get very, very complicated. So a lot of the na native features for AWS really help us out there, and we focus on triple active um, high availability for a lot of our deployments. Um, the next one uh, that's kind of near and dear to me is data residency and privacy. So as anyone that can spend 10 minutes on looking on the news, you'll see that you know, there's a new headline every day. So a lot of companies are getting very, very concerned of where their data is centered. Um, uh, centered. So we had a bit of a challenge internally in the company is we have north of 100 deployments um, uh, near of 6,000 EC2s dedicated to data storage how do we respond to our customers' needs going into each individual region? So we had to come up with a way of deploying an entire bootstrap, entire region from top down, from infrastructure all the way to applications in under 48 hours. Because as our customers got more uh, inquisitive of what the actual market was doing for data residency, we had to be able to go to a new region very, very quickly. So we have a custom Argo workflow process in the background that um, will deploy our entire fleet with two people involved um, under 48 hours, so it's quite um, important to us to be able to respond to the demands of our customers. And so scalability, as you can imagine, we have all this data, what do you do with it? They're going to query it, right? Now, scalability for us is responding to latency, responding to availability issues, responding to performance. Now, one thing that we are able to do with this fleet of EC2s and Amazon's um, auto scaling is we can swap out instance classes dependent on each customer's workload requirements, and we can do this in a very, very uh, rapid fashion. And we can do somewhere north of, I think the latest statistic that I saw was about 500 EC2s per day that we can swap out for an instance type. Now, this gives us a unique um, uh, position of actually helping our customers respond to when they need their data, now they can have it. 
Now, finally, security. Um, I think it touches a lot of areas, but one thing that uh, my department and myself focus on very, quite heavily is it's one thing to have XDR, it's one thing to have um, pen tests and whatnot, but often we find that security is one th big thing that really sticks out to us. What do we do with 100,000 secrets and credentials that are stored in our background? How do we manage our day two? How do we do all these integrations, especially with a five data center region bootstrap? Now, we partnered with HashiCorp. Um, they're a Vault solution, and we um, have a quite uh, intricate design flow in regards to how we manage our credentials. But we pride ourselves in this integration, going back to we can stand up a new region in 48 hours. Top, top down, um, after that 48 hours is complete, um, our engineers can log on, deploy their applications, and update um, with no downtime. So between all those four things, we get quite a lot of um, focus on moving faster to responding to the industry demands and changes. Yeah, uh, thank you, but I mean, just to go back to, to what our core expertise is, digital communications, for our customers, that means the communications of their C staff, all the way down to an everyday employee, as well as their most important customers. So, where we are today is we are really critical infrastructure, a critical service for our customers, so security, Availability, the scale that we talked about, data redundancy. This is not; these are not nice to haves. And uh, uh, the foundation of AWS really allows us to deliver um, at the pace that we need to. So, to kind of bring it all home, as Blake mentioned, this is really all about getting to outcomes faster for our customers, leveraging public cloud. Just, I, Blake, did you touch this? How many releases do you think we did last month? Whether it's for functionality or just to keep the system healthy. What does that look like for us? Um, I think last month we clocked about 7,500 changes with about 250 differentiator releases. It's just not possible without the, the modern technologies that we have our availability. So uh, you know, just to summarize kind of what we offer is an end-to-end, -end fully integrated platform with all the scale, resilience, security, and agile delivery that our customers expect. You don't have to buy it all at once, categorically. You would to get the most value, but the, the digital transformation that I was describing uh, against that legacy architecture, that is a journey. It takes time, and we're happy to, to, to consult with our customers and how we can help them uh, progress on that journey. Um, I'm looking at the clock here. We wanted to, to leave plenty of time for, for questions from the audience. I know some folks have already expressed interest in a demo. I have uh, one of my colleagues, Ryan Bachik, in the, I don't know how to describe the suit, but he's right there. He's going to be doing demos. Our booth is just over here to the left. Um, and if you're too shy in this setting, we are having a happy hour later at Sushi Samba, so stop by the booth, pick up an invitation. So um, with that, I'm happy to pause for any questions from the audience. I don't know where our colleague with the mic went. Go ahead, yeah, I can repeat the question. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Almost got tackled by security there. What's, I'm sorry, but what, what exactly is your storage again? Because when we're looking at the other, the, the diagram, you got a lot of Veritas in there. Right? So what's your backend storage, is it S3? Uh, I, oh, if there was, was there a Veritas? Veritas actually has a competing solution Oh, no, with no. us? In, in the other diagram you had, you had an architectural diagram. And there was a bunch of Veritas pieces. Right, right, I understand that. What's your backend storage? Is it, is it S3? Yes, S3, S3 for three. object storage. Right. Go ahead yeah. and like this for you, yeah. Okay. That's, that's the question. So do, you, so, so do you have customers that worry about like data, the costs of moving data? Yeah, we have uh, constant conversations about uh, ingress, egress, simple tiered storage compatibilities. We have a fairly extensive solution um, with tiered storage. We take advantage of the intelligent tiering for S3. Um, that's our biggest win. Um, and we have a pretty intricate uh, single tenant deployment aspect to keep our cost allocation, our FinOps process is pretty tight, where we can see our changes and actual uh, spending patterns, uh, anomalies, all those types of fun things. But um, yeah, the, our, our customers have a constant conversation with us in regards to how much they're actually going to be paying for our storage. So we, we've developed some pretty interesting ways to get around that. Um, but our primary one is the intelligent tiering for S3. Uh, it's a good question. I think um, 
I wouldn't want folks to leave the impression that because we supply a regulatory compliance solution, it's a licensed to operate issue, that that means that our customers have unlimited budgets. Um, we see a lot of scrutiny on all spend, regardless of how important it is for regulatory compliance. So the other way we help manage that, for example, e-discovery, the reason we invest so much in APIs is because categorically our customers will need to get data out of the platform. They might have to produce it to a regulator, uh, a, a third party e-discovery provider, so it's going to happen. So the way that we help manage that, beyond what Blake just mentioned, is we invest in early case assessment capabilities so they can do more work in the tool to try and reduce the third party discovery cost by producing the least amount of data possible to help manage that. Did that touch on most of your questions? Cool. Anything else from the crowd? I think you explained everything perfectly. Must be. Well, listen, um, with that, I will thank you all again for taking the time to spend with us today. I really appreciate it again. Come find us at the booth over there. See Ryan for a demo. Come talk to Blake or I after this if you have other questions. We sincerely appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you, Blake, for your assistance.